Hi there, it's uh, Nat here from the Club Golfer. I'm here with uh, David Blair today, who's been my golf coach for about the last, I think it's about six to 12 months. I've been working with David and um, really enjoyed the process, really enjoyed the way that he explains the, the, the swing to me and it's, it's made a big difference to me. So I thought I'd make a video today with David. David's got his own channel, so I'll um, link to that as well see his content um, but David's maybe gonna say a few words about yeah what you described um, maybe when I came to see you I suppose it was kind of typical of why I see um, there was too much of the, the kind of holding the shot off hence you know the driver tended to block out to the right that's right yeah yeah kind of a lot of resistance here in the left arm and shoulder um, and that was the mean but there's all this good detail through most of my life I've had that big push slice yeah. and off I hit it a long way so that was costing me quite a lot of shots and, and quite a lot of balls as well. No de definitely and it's something that um, we're getting very close to eradicating now. <laughs> it's actually looking really good mm -hmm. and, and really just working on this, the, the, the concept, the triangle, everything's moving nicely together and we have the symmetry, right arms folding, left arm folding. Once we do that and then allow the, the wrists to work the club actually starts to square. It's not by chance that we, we square it. It's through certain swing mechanics. So that's what we've been working on here yeah. with Nat. And, and you'll see more of this as we as we go down down the line a little bit. What I've really enjoyed about working with you is it's uh, repetitive. So if I'm, and the swing needs to be repetitive to, to be consistent. Um, and I find that you're very good at saying, well, hang on a second, you know, we've talked about this for the last few weeks, but you're still doing the same thing. So actually that's been really helpful for me to just try and get some consistency. And it's not like I'm trying to come here and do something different every time. I know exactly what I'm trying to do. It's just a matter of executing. So everything's built and we've talked about the swing build process. Rather than spending too much time correcting faults, it's get to the real nitty gritty. How does the swing work? And then how do you then build it? Giving people a real kind of structure, as Matt yeah. said, to follow. Uh, so that you can go away and hopefully then practice constructively towards that goal. So that's what we're looking at, the swing build process rather than a, a faults and fixes regime. Yeah, no, it's been really, really good. I've really enjoyed it. So we're down here at David's swing build studio here in Glasgow um, and he's got some absolutely fantastic technology and simulators. So I'm just going to hit a few shots and maybe we're going to show you guys what we've been working on. A proper connected release is, is what we're aiming for. Yeah. And, and you know, that so that it comes right down to the nitty gritty. And that's what Phil Nicholson was doing the other night. Just you could see him almost just getting this feeling in his mind. And I've seen Tiger and the T do this as well. Yeah. Same from there. Very soft. What they're trying to do is get the feeling that the top head has gone past them without any, any yeah. help. And then you just do a bigger a bigger version. So maybe So I think what we're gonna do now is look at um bit of what we did last week which is what trying to get me to release the club head I was also I'm also still having a bit of a problem with that back leg coming out too much and affecting the swing and sort of getting a bit pushy as well so one of my fault I need to try and keep this leg what kind of a bit more stationary yeah. through the swing would you say it is a feeling of, of what we're always trying to do if you think of the body in three bits shoulders we'll call it the hips and then the bottom bit your feet through the ball, we want maximum movement from the hips. Mm -hmm. This is really just following on. Mm -hmm. And I've got to say, there's a, there's a trend at the minute for this concept of jumping and pushing from the feet. Mm -hmm. I don't see any top players doing that. Well, and it's uh, maybe coming from maybe McElroy on the television. They talk about him using the kind of ground. Yeah. Um, but it's uh, it's a sequencing thing, is it not? It is. It is. I mean, it, he's yeah. doing it in the right order. Whereas I, I think in the past, have, have kind of try to get my body into the swing yeah. instead of letting the club head sort of pass, oh. pass that's, through like that's that. It, yeah. Yeah. What we're trying to get, the two things, a connected release. So if you're, if you're turning back, like so, the checkpoint here is everything's nice and down, elbows together. Whenever your shoulders are facing, the elbows are in front of you. And then just turn through, let the hands go. And it's a complete mirror image on the way through. That's good. The main checkpoint here, down and together. Mm -hmm. 
tiny as you, I mean that hits a, you know, he's at lock, lock, head speed. And if, if you get this lovely release, and even see just that little bit of shoulder, that would look like mad. Or the dreaded slice comes from this, the kind of rolling yeah. with and not allowing the left arm to, to just fold away. Yeah. So if you just can't start running through that now. Yeah. That's it, and then when you just want one, one more right into that follow through. Yeah. See, every, I see that looks really good now. Yeah. See everything's low down. But we talk about um, Dustin Johnson yeah. and how low through the ball. He's, he's got that lovely release mm -hmm. through here. His hands are totally, his right hand having released that energy. Um, it's now kind of transferred into the left hand. Certainly in the last couple of weeks I've found, got that feeling of kind of the really really loading the club and then really releasing it and that's yeah. really helped me because I think before I was tend to try and get it the whole the whole body was trying to create that kind of pace and that swing yeah, whereas yeah, now yeah. it's much more relaxed up here and then it's just trying to kind of load it and then release it mm. kind of like that um, and, and I still struggle I still struggle I still go back to the old kind of still going to take a bit of time yeah, to take some in. time to um, the old guys like Henry Cotton was adamant. What he actually meant, and I, I know some people think maybe I'm, I want people to stand there and just kind of flick the wrists at it. Of course, that's not what we're looking at. Yeah. What he's talking about when you talk about training the hands was training all the energy through impact to release down here. Yeah. Right at the bottom of the triangle. I always say, you know, the higher up the handicap bracket you go, uh -huh. the more you start to see it all, you know, happening up here. Up higher up the bottom. Yeah, yeah. Um, and of course, that, that heaving does, it feels, you know, oh, totally off balance there. Who would you say are the pros then currently that you could look to? And, I mean, all of them do it to some extent. Who are the easy ones to say, oh, that's, that's obvious that it's just all, it's just a nice width at the bottom. So. Well, I was, funny enough, Brooks Kepka was interviewed recently and he said he just doesn't want any of this technical stuff. Uh -huh. he, he said, I just love to swing and let it go. And when you see him at the top of his back swing, you see this kind of almost that, a reverse flick, yeah. uh, real softness, which is him loading up. Right. And each, as we know, he hits the ball a mile. And he's got that lovely whip at the bottom. A lot of the players playing maybe, especially the shorter irons, where, where they'll hit one in and they'll hold that position, say about here. But what they've actually done, they've, they've curtailed the body movement on the way through, but they've still did that full release. And Tommy Fleetwood. Tommy Fleetwood, oh. just finishing there. You hit the ball just as far <laughs> as you do within a full swing. Yeah. In many ways, and it's got more control. Well, it's got yeah. yeah it's actually it has more control because you're doing less. Yeah. A couple of practice swings and then onto the ball. Just get that slap. What we're doing a short swing for a minute. But just and yeah, the usual checkpoints. Yeah, that looks really good. So usual checkpoints. David saying there, it's like shoulders down is the main one. So probably in the past, I would have been. More up, more up. That was, this was tense. So the checkpoint, sorry, getting it, everything feeling kind of, to me, everything feels low, shoulders low. So then you're hitting the ball and the shoulders, everything's staying low yeah. at the end and, and releasing. Yeah, but always remember the three main components in the swing. Um, two move, end movements. First of all, the body turn. You know, we see that all the players turn. You can't just do that. <laughs> round, round. The wrists are hitting, hinging, and really, really multiply up the energy. Mm -hmm. um, Henry Cotton always said he felt as if he got 15% of right. the power from just the turning. 85% comes from the elbows down, mm -hmm. that real whip. The third part of that is, is really putting it together. And as I'm turning, my the upper arms and shoulders, this is the control area. Mm -hmm. by, by not using it to try and either force it or to, to hit it. Keep that in mind, Matt, if you can just, a couple of practice swings. Yeah, that's good. And then repeat with the ball now, that's good. We're doing a shorter swing just now, but everything's a nice turn of the shoulders. There's no feeling here of any kind of lifting, so everything's nicely down and together. Shoulders facing here, elbows still in front. Then just let it go the way through, exactly. I was mirroring that now. Everything's nicely down. 
remember that's going to get the club onto its correct plane. Mm -hmm. All this technical stuff about positions and stuff. I mean, it, it almost seems it, it, you might think that we're actually oversimplifying this. So you know, one of the early exercises that I did with David was, and correct me if I'm wrong here, David, but I think it was literally just standing, standing like this, focus on one spot, and then literally all it was this trying to find the low point. And I did, you told me to do go home and just do that 20 yeah. minutes a day. And I did it 20 minutes, of, well, I didn't do it 20 minutes a day. I'm not yeah. telling you that. I did it five minutes a day, um, and, but it definitely makes a difference. Yeah, well, it definitely, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's better. Better straight, wasn't it? One of the things I think we're really talking about here, we might see that strange concept of what the best players do. Uh -huh. Having turned and got the club head behind them. And I often say you'll maybe see an occasional maybe high handicap. Pretty good through the backswing. Mm -hmm. Then it all goes a bit wrong. But what the best players do, they then get let the club head go past. Typically, I see so many people coming in, forcing it, and you can see here how the club is still in front of my shoulders. Whereas, yeah, and I've been throw swing at about this point, I've actually pulled through. Yeah. So what we're doing here, if you try that again, is getting that feeling of just getting the club head past you. Past you. And the arms are, yes, they're there. Yes, yeah, so that sounded really solid. Yeah, that sounded quite nice straight, yeah. Yes, pretty much. Yeah, fix, go home. Sorted. Sorted. <laughs> and that was a fairly compact looking swing, but it's all about that release. Yeah. And this is good because you can see all the. Yeah. So yeah, this is actually technology from club fitting, is that right? You Designed for club fitting, yeah. yeah. So it tells you everything. So this bit here is really significant. This is a representation of the club face little dotted line so it's telling you you're 1.7 degrees into, into out, out right slightly open club face uh 2.3 mm -hmm. degrees open which is why it's gone eight yards eight right yards, right okay. so but it's very close to neutral yeah you know yeah. that's that good i think when i came to start with that was nowhere near that really nowhere near that neutrality and it will tell you it will tell you impact position where it's tell you, yes oh yeah that one maybe slightly towards the heel right a little bit but again that's huge for a that's an eight nine a oh, nine wow i mean that 100 uh, 89 miles an hour of head speed is uh, mm. more than i can do <laughs> <laughs> it's it's just harnessing it harnessing it right exactly yeah That looks really good. I mean, I, there's no need for me to almost check this. Everything's nicely down. Um, you know, club, the left wrist is fully hinged back in itself, which tells you there's been a nice full release. Mm -hmm. And your elbows, the points of the elbows are still down. Mm -hmm. As soon as we let the, up, the upper arms fly, there the club wants to change. Just turn around this way. That was my kind of position like that. If I was to do this, or if I was to bring, I see a lot of actually golfers, it's the holding this yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. And I think you've got a good video on your channel about if you come through like that and hold it off, you can see the face is like miles open. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it doesn't matter how wristy I get. Whenever I start, the club is square. Square. It's when, say, my right arm pops out, the mm. club is shut, and the dreaded slice is when this, the, the front arm is pulling and doing this, see the club face is left open. Yeah. And it, it has to go that way. Yeah. So it really comes back to this training the hands to, to release that energy. Yeah, that looked very good. Yeah, solid. So that's it. And I think doing that, the sort of just practicing the swing, for me, it was quite important to just feel like you know, just loose almost. Oh my God. Well, that, you know, there's no point, I, that wasn't a good, sh a good result. No. What actually happened there, that was a wee bit exactly what we're talking about. Matt's body actually moved slightly too soon into that. Ah, uh, right. Okay. And as a result, the, the club head actually got thrown outside the plane. Right, okay. So, uh, yeah, so you were so actually... that was a good one, actually, then, mistake. It yeah, was, yeah, definitely. It was moving that, that kind of like that. Yeah. And then that pushes everything out. Yeah, yeah. Just set yourself up. 
So when we do this kind of shorter swing, the feeling is at this point that you're still kind of facing, you know, mm, your body's still there. there. The club has gone away past you. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be about this point in the full swing that mm, you'd actually start, start to just come up. Yeah. So I keep saying there's many ways, to, the secret of the whole thing for me is how to get the club from behind and past. Yeah. I know I said that. Before, and that's what I said, I think I said earlier. My fault coming back again there, which is just moving too yeah. moving too early, yeah. even on a short swing like this, it's not about the momentum necessarily, it's mm. about our brain pattern to say, oh, I need to kind of use this. That's Whereas right. for me, it's just, and actually for me to practice it, it helped if I can I contract my right glute muscle. Yeah. And so I'm not allowing this to kind of come out like this. So I'll try one, try one of those, like, see if I can do it. Yeah, so that's different now. Yeah, that's me trying to I, keep that yeah. more kind of what I say locked in. It, it, it feels a bit that way. It feels yeah. a bit looser, doesn't it? So you can then just. Yeah, it's good. It feels loose because what you've done, you've taken all the kind of the tension, tension out of it. Out. Yeah. Or, or the wasted energy, I like well, to like call the it. Kind of hit, the, 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 the hit, hit, the hit, hit yeah. it's more, when I was before, I was more like, kind of, I used to play cricket when I was mm. young, and I think maybe there was a bit of that kind of forward drive. That's how it looked, yeah. you know, six months ago or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, that's Whereas it. now it's much more trying to just get, just everything, like you say, everything here is connected to try and get that in position to then just release it. Mm. Um, yeah, that's it. Yeah, that looked uh, really solid, a real good release. It's gone almost like a same dead straight, really good carry. And I think some people might find this actually, I was saying to earlier, might find this a bit controversial, that it's kind of, people would say that kind of wristy, that's a wristy action, but um, what I've learned, I probably disagree with that now, I believe, from what you've told me, what I've seen, that that is the correct, and, and it's not, it's not like, this is not revolutionary, is it? You not at all. all. No, not a lot at all. Coaches are teaching this. Mm. Um, I saw a good video. In fact, I'll try and link to it. Padre Carrington, Pori. I don't know how you say it. Pori Carrington did a really good video on this, and he said exactly the same as you. Most club golfers get that bit wrong, and it is the is the snap release. So um, yeah, there's uh, it's not it's not just you, is it? It's, it's teaching oh, no. this particular thing because, as I say, I think that. Some people think, oh no, that's, that, that's been told on Sky Sports that that's too risky or something. Mm. They do. Sometimes the commentators will say things like that. It makes it sound as if, you know, um, I heard somebody say the other day, oh, he, he, he flipped his wrists so it went left. Uh -huh. But the reason he flipped the wrists was uh, the body stopped. Right. Well, if you've got a bit of tension and you don't quite, you know, if you, so your body, instead of everything moving nicely synchronised and the club is then going to square, if I, and, oh, the holding. What about this? So, uh, just pick up another one. So I'm, I'm just thinking what people would be thinking at home. It's like, well, I've seen on other YouTube channels or other um, Sky Sports or whatnot about this. It's all about compressing the ball and it's all about having the ball like far back and kind of, kind of getting down on it like this. What would you, what would you sort of say about that? Yeah, yes and no. Can I just come over here now for a minute? I mean, well, firstly, I believe if, if you're a proper swinger, you know, let's call. Um, hitting, uh, hitting's wrong, and that takes two two forms: either trying to force it, or even tensely trying to sort of guide through the ball. That doesn't work. We want the club head to be like free wheeling, which is like re relaxed muscles working. But if I do that and just swing, what actually happens is you almost instinctively, you know, it's a bit like the skimming the stone concept where you're the body is kind of moving before you, you know, you whip it through there. And that tends to happen, so the impact, already I'm getting ahead of it. So hopefully I'm then going to hit ball turf, mm -hmm. you know, that ball turf strike. Mm -hmm. What happens when people force it and uh, this, this gets involved? Things like, you know, you can't shift the weight through, because mm -hmm. instead of everything moving this way, everything's going to go up and back. And you'll see people lose balance, you know, and all your head came up, well, it was the shoulders that pulled the head up. So that this it's impossible to then compress the ball mm. when that actually happens. Whereas if I actually kind of stay here and just, just really swing, 
I'll do a wee short one and hopefully you can pick up the... That felt like I compressed it there, but I wasn't mm. trying to. It was purely because the body got ahead of me there, and so my club came down, down, ball, and turf afterwards. Um, anyway, if you're anywhere near Glasgow, it might be worth coming down and seeing, seeing David. Um,